Well, good morning, Fairhaven. What a wonderful day to be with you as it's Easter weekend. I'm so glad that we get to worship together today, celebrating Christ's resurrection. And so as part of that celebration today, we're going to have Believer's Baptism. If you're not a longtime uh, attender of Fairhaven, let me explain what's going to happen is we'll have people being baptized during our worship as part of our worship experience. As you see these people baptized, feel free to celebrate along with them. They are making an outward expression of giving their lives to Jesus and following him in obedience to declare publicly that they belong to him. So we're very excited about that. In fact, I got to baptize my own son in the service yesterday, so it's already been a fantastic weekend. So what a, what a great time to be together. Well, if you've been to Fairhaven over the last few weeks, we've introduced a song called Risen Indeed, and that's just something that we wanted to do to celebrate Christ's resurrection this year. Over the centuries, there's been a greeting that people have given to each other where they've said, he is risen, he is risen indeed, celebrating that he is no longer in the grave, but that God through his power raised Jesus, and he's alive and well and can live in us today if we've given our hearts to him. So let's not wait any longer, let's stand to our feet, let's celebrate that he is risen, Christ is alive, and he gives us the power of salvation. Let's worship together, church. Have you heard about the healer? Only son of the Father. Yeah. 
Sing it out. You keep hope alive. You keep hope alive. You keep hope alive from the beginning to end. Your word never fails.
you may be seated. Well, there is nothing quite like an Easter celebration, is there? It's amazing. And that's because Easter is the defining moment 
the defining moment for our faith. And so we celebrate that today. And the other thing that we get to celebrate this weekend is that many people, dozens and dozens of people across all of our campuses are experiencing defining moments in their faith journey as they have made the decision to take that next right step and be baptized, proclaiming that Jesus is Lord of their lives. And so we wanna celebrate with them. And so will you join me in celebrating and affirming them by giving them a round of applause. Well, it's such an awesome, special weekend for all of us to be together. And the really beautiful thing about Fairhaven Church is that we can worship together as a church family in many locations. And so whether you're joining us in person or online, we are excited that you're here and we wanna make sure we have an opportunity to connect with you today. So take out your phone, you're gonna text the word hello to the number 32,000. And when you do that, we're just gonna have a conversation. We want to know how we can be praying for you because we are a praying church. We also want to know how we can help you take your next right step. For instance, you might be thinking, hey, I want more information about what is baptism all about? Or maybe you're ready to get baptized yourself and you want to know when is the next service? Well, we can talk about all of those things through that texting feature. So make sure you connect with us today. And then while you have your phone out, it's a great time for you to make sure that you have the Fairhaven app. That's where you're going to find the sermon notes for today's message. And that's where you can find out information about the many things that are happening in and around our church. Well, you've already heard me say the phrase, next right step, a few times. And that's because here at Fairhaven Church, we believe that every single person, no matter where you are on your faith journey, you can take a next right step. So for some of you, that might be finding out more information about Fairhaven Church. And so we have a class, uh, it's happening April 6th called First Step, and that class is going to be on that Saturday as a half-day class, and when you attend, you're going to learn who we are, what we believe, and really the heartbeat of our church family. And so we would love to see all of you there. So whether you've been here for 30 minutes, 30 years, it does not matter. We wanna make sure that you're able to come to that class. So just go to our app or our website, you can register, um, and you can find out more information there as well. But maybe your next right step is just coming back to worship next Sunday. We're gonna start a brand new sermon series in 1 Peter called Steadfast, where we are going to talk about how we can remain steadfast in our faith no matter the circumstances around us. And so I wanna personally invite you to come back next week as this book of the Bible has been instrumental in my own faith. And so I would love for you to experience walking through that with us as well. Or it could be that God is nudging you to take your next right step in generosity. And if that is something you would like to respond to, there are black boxes in the back of the room. As you leave today, you can utilize those. Or you can also give on our app or on our website. So it's Easter, we're gonna keep celebrating and we're gonna do that by getting into God's word. So this morning our lead pastor, David Smith, he's going to come and bring a powerful Easter message. So get your Bibles, get your sermon notes, cause we're digging in. Happy Easter, everybody. So great to see you. Thank you for being here. If you are a guest in any one of our campuses, you have been greeted, and I want to do that as well. My name is David. I'm one of the pastors here on staff. It's great to have you. I get the honor of opening God's Word with you on this Easter Sunday, and so we're so, so glad that you're here. Um, if you are a guest, you probably got invited by somebody, and so thank you for taking our invitation, or they promised you lunch, or your mom told you you have to come. I don't know what it is, but we're glad to have you here. Uh, for those of you that come regularly, it's great to see your faces. Um, if you don't know, we are one church. 
church in five different locations. And in just a second, I'm going to ask you to help me by applause, just welcoming everybody. We, have, we are a campus in Springboro and Northmont, Beaver Creek, uh, here in Centerville and online. People joining us now uh, online here in the Dayton area and all over the place, Siesta Key, uh, Florida, San, uh, Sarasota, Florida, and many other places. So it's great to have you here with us today. Happy Easter to all of you. We're so, so glad that you uh, could join us here today. If you are new to Fairhaven, you might want to know, because you see this all over the place, we talk a lot here at Fairhaven uh, about finding hope. We want everybody to find hope, man, woman, child. So it doesn't matter what the age group is, we really want you to find hope. And the way we define find hope is that find hope is the process of finding absolute confidence in God no matter what. And actually, we need each other in the process because when you're going through something, um, we need to come around you. And when we're going through something, we need you to come around us. And so it's really a a great process. That's why we encourage people to be involved in community because uh, it's a process. And we we want you to process finding confidence with God in every situation that you face. And so we talk about find home. That's what it is. It's literally a process of you finding confidence in a relationship with God. And and maybe today, for some of you, that could begin that journey for you as well. You see, you're joining today, think about this, you're joining today with billions, with a B, billions of people all around the world who are celebrating Easter. In every country around the planet, it's amazing if you can think about it, that billions of people are saying together, he is risen, he is risen indeed. And so uh, I would tell you today, because of that very fact, that Easter changes everything. Anybody agree with that? Easter changes everything. In fact, we say that Easter is so important that it gives us the reason to come the other weeks of the year. And so Easter is so significant because it changes everything for you and for me. And so that's why we're here today. The Apostle Paul wrote something about that. And this is what he said. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he said, If Christ, if Jesus, had not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. What he's saying there, let me put that in words that maybe you can understand today. What he's saying that if the resurrection didn't happen, if Jesus did not walk away from the tomb, if God did not raise his son out of the tomb that day, 2,000 years ago, then really all we're doing is I'm just gaslighting you. I'm just trying to convince you to do something that, you know, gets you in some rat race spiritually or religiously, uh, or worse than that, um, following Jesus is just really meaningless. And so you should go home now and, and we should stop and do everything, you know, we can to just turn this whole thing off. Um, But that's not at all what we're here about. Paul is really driving home the fact uh, that Easter changes everything in our life. And the truth of the matter is, the Apostle Paul who wrote that, for him, it was very, very personal. We're going to be looking in Acts today, and in just a second, I'm going to ask you if you have a Bible or a device to turn there, but if you were to turn to Acts chapter 9, you'll see his story. Paul was a guy who knew a lot about God, didn't know anything about Jesus, and so when Jesus came on the scene and uh, people started to follow him, he had his disciples there, he was doing miracles, he was creating a big buzz and a stir, Um, Paul decided that this isn't right, and so he actually was persecuting and causing people to suffer who wanted to follow Jesus. Jesus to the point even of death. So Paul was on the other side, if you will, trying to, trying to make sure nobody was a follower of Jesus until, you can read it for yourself in Acts chapter 9, until he encountered Jesus and it changed everything for him in his life. And so because of that, it not only changed what he was thinking about, it changed who he was as a person. And so then he went on and wanted to make sure that everybody heard about this. And so he began to travel. And the book of Acts tells us the places that he traveled. And so I want to look at that today because in his travel, he stopped at this location and he gave, I think, the best message, the best talk on Easter ever. So I'm going to steal it. Uh, If that's okay with you, I'm going to steal his talk. Um, Because it's it's better than what I could do, and so I want to show you that today. So if you have a Bible, or you have a device, and you want to turn with me, it's in Acts chapter 17. Um, For those of you that are relatively new or visiting with us, um, we always ask you to bring your Bibles because we want you to turn there on Easter. I'm going to put it right here on this little screen right here. But every single week, we ask you to have your Bibles with you and open them up because this is God's Word to you. So with that in mind, 
If you came here today and you're like, I don't even have a copy of the Bible, we want to give you one in all of our campuses, in Springboro, Northmont, Beaver Creek, right here at Centerville, and online, just let us know. Uh, in all of our campuses, we have them. And so on the way out today, if you're like, you know what, I need a copy of the Bible, um, we want to give that to you free of charge, just as a way of letting you know that it's just that important to us. So grab it on the way out. We'd love for that to happen. But if you have a Bible or a device, turn with me to Acts chapter 17, where we pick up the story. Paul is traveling. And he gets to the city called Athens. Athens is in Greece. You can actually travel there today if you wanted to and go to Greece and actually see some of the things they're going to be talking about today. And while he was there, Paul begins to talk about who Jesus is, and he begins to talk about the resurrection, and he creates a big stir. People are all up in arms. They're like, what are you talking about? We want to hear more about this. Um, are you serious? And so uh, you see that in Acts chapter 17, beginning in verse 16 and so forth. Then we get to verse 18, and he, this is why he has created a stir, because he's preaching about Jesus and the resurrection. Now, this is really important here, because if it's just about Jesus and there was no resurrection, if there was no resurrection without the resurrection... Jesus is just another egg in the omelet of religion. In other words, if you could travel the world, you could see that there are all kinds of faith traditions out there. There's all kinds of beliefs that are all across the globe. And people are trying to convince you perhaps about that. And here's what I would say. You're here today and you're at Easter and you're thinking about who Jesus is. It, the resurrection changes everything. Without the resurrection, Jesus is just Adam to the list. Uh, in fact, in Athens, there were gods everywhere. It was the epicenter of all the Greek gods. Ever hear about the Greek gods? Probably in some movie or some you know, video game or maybe in some book that you've read in high school or college or whatever it might be. You may have studied some of them. If you went to Athens, that's the epicenter. There's temples. Uh, you can today see ruins of the temples that are there. And Paul was there and was talking about Jesus because if you don't mention the resurrection, then those there in Athens were like, oh, yeah, well, just add them to the list. Um, because that'd be great. We'd make, we want to make sure that we're followers of Jesus too. But the resurrection changed everything, and so Paul was preaching about Jesus and the resurrection. And here's the reason why. I've already said it, but here's the reason why. Because the resurrection changes everything. Anybody agree with me on that one? Amen. Right? Centerville, Classics, Northmont, Springboro, Beaver Creek, right? All these online. It changes everything. And so what I want to do is look at his message today, what he had to say to the people there in Athens while they were thinking about all the gods that they had there in Greece. And I want you to see what he has to say. It's really, really amazing. And you'll see that, in fact, it does. It changes everything. And so all of a sudden, while he's talking to these people, a couple of people come up to him and said, hey, you got to come here and you got to talk to everybody because they need to hear this. And so they're going to bring him to the Areopagus, which is the place where you can see all the temples. So not only is Athens the center of all the Greek gods, the Areopagus is the center of where you see all the temples. You can still go there today. And so that's what happened. They convinced Paul to go there so that he could have a conversation. Here's what happened. If you have your Bibles open, uh, verse 22. So Paul, standing in the midst of the Areopagus... Some know it as Mars Hill. Anybody ever hear of Mars Hill? Um, that's where he was standing, on a rock there. It's a big rock that's there. In fact, I've stood there. I'll show you a picture in just a second. You can stand there even today and see some of the ruins that are there. So he was standing at Mars Hill, and this is what he said. Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. Now, the word religious there is not the word that you and I would use as religious, like he's doing some kind of spiritual thing. The word there is superstitious. So Paul is saying, with all these gods that you have here, I see that you're pretty superstitious. I see that you want to connect with some God. I see that you're interested. I see that through philosophy and through uh, you know, your thought process, you want to connect. If you read Acts 17, it says there that he was talking to the Epicureans. They were the atheists of the day. So even atheists were there. So if you're here at any one of our campuses or online, and you're like, I'm an atheist, I'm glad you're here. Because this message that Paul gives was actually given to atheists that day, the Epicureans. The Stoics mentioned in Acts 17, they're the philosophers. They're the ones that want to think through this whole thing. They're the ones that would say, you know, life is hard. you got to grin and bear it. 
you know, the Epicureans, they're the atheists, they would say, you know what, uh, this is all you got, so go for it. Have as much fun as you can, because this is it, so go for it. And in the midst of all of that, there's lots and lots of questions that are there. You could study it for yourself, but if you went to Athens back then, 2,000 years ago, you would discover that there are 30,000 gods. So pick your god. Pick which one you're going to worship. The truth of the matter is, if you didn't want it to rain, you would worship a certain god. If you wanted to get married, you worship another god. If you wanted to have children, you worship another god. They had a god for everything, 30,000-some gods that were there. In the mix of all of this, Paul wants to draw their attention to Jesus and the resurrection because Easter changes, say it with me, church, everything changes everything my wife Kathy and I we had the opportunity we spoke in uh, in Greece one year a couple years ago and I wanted to go to Mars Hill because I've read Acts 17 many times and so I went there and we were standing there and you can see the Parthenon behind us there the Parthenon is the temple for Athena who was the goddess and it's still there today and there's many ruins that are there it's absolutely amazing and Paul was standing right on that rock and the people that were asking questions then are the same questions that we ask today. Did you know that? I mean, even today, the questions, uh, we're asking the same questions that we ask today. And the questions go something like this. Um, is there really a God? And is there a God that is personal? Is there a God that can know me and, and can I know him? Can I know that God? Is there a God out there? Is, there? is there something going on that is greater than me, that's bigger than me, that's, that's more significant than me, that as I look around and see all the things that are happening, is there something that's going on that would tell me there is in fact a God who's involved, who's personal, who can know you, and you can have a relationship with him? People are still asking that question today. Probably not out loud, actually. But they're saying it this way. See if you've ever heard this phrase before. The phrase goes something like this. Everything happens for a reason. Anybody ever hear that statement before? I'm sure you have. The question, though, is if everything happens for a reason, what's behind the reason? And is there a force that really is the reason? And is it really everything? I mean, or is it just some things or just a few things or things that you get the gods mad or whatever it might be uh, in your life? And so we're asking the same questions they were asking 2,000 years ago. And I think Paul has an answer for us today. And that's why I'm so excited to actually share with you his message uh, at Easter because it's impacted me as I've read it and studied it and looked at it. And I want you to see it again today. And so Paul starts off, first of all, as he's talking to them, he's there in Athens, um, he's there at Mars Hill, Areopagus, and he starts talking to them. Them, and this is the first thing he says to them. He says, for as I passed along and observed the objects of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Paul is saying, look, I've been walking around here, and I know you got lots of questions, uh, and I'm sure you want those questions to be answered, and you've got lots of pieces in your spiritual mind that are missing. Um, and in fact, you even have a God that you don't even know, you don't even know his name, to the unknown God. Now, some of you have probably heard this before, you probably heard about the, you know, the altar or the table of the unknown God. What you may not know is that there was more than just one. They were all over Athens. Here's why. 400 years before Jesus came on the scene, there was a huge plague that happened in Athens. Not unlike COVID. You remember COVID? How many of you don't want to remember COVID? <laughs> it was like COVID in the sense that lots and lots of people were hurting as a, res as a result of this plague. In fact, the plague was worse than COVID because the plague that happened 400 years before Jesus actually killed about 30% of everybody living in the city of Athens. And so these Stoics, these philosophers, and these Epicureans, these atheists thought, we got to do something about this. And so here's what their plan was. See if, see if you like their plan. You can Google it if you want for yourself. Here's their plan. They said, let's bring in all the farmers and let's bring in all the sheep into the city because, you know, the farm lines were around the city. And so they brought the sheep in and this is what they did. They said, let's have the sheep come in and let them wander all by themselves. Just let them go wherever they want. They can wander. And, and if a sheep encounters somebody who's sick and they die, the sheep dies, wherever they die, 
Let's put up an altar or a table or a stone and let's list it as the unknown God because we don't know what God. Apparently, we've gotten some God mad and therefore this plague is coming and we don't know why and so let's put this unknown God there. And so they had him all over the city. And so Paul says, look, I've been walking around and uh, as he's talking to them and, I, and I've observed the fact that you've got all these gods that are here and some of them you don't even know who they are. Here's what Paul is driving at, which is a really, really important piece to understanding Jesus and the resurrection. Paul is trying to drive at the point that God wants to meet you right where you are. That he is, in fact, a very personal God. He's a God that cares about you, about your situation, about the things that you care about. He wants to meet you today, on this Easter, right where you're at. You might have come in and thought to yourself, you know what, this is my last shot. Uh, I don't know if anything can happen in my life. Or you may have come and your mind is turned off and, and because you know what, you've got so much going on in your life. I mean, you're stressed to the nth degree. You've got stuff happening in your financial world, your relational world, your health world, whatever it might be. I've got great news for you. Here's the reason why Easter changes everything. Because it reminds us that God... The God of the universe, the God who created you and I, the God who is personal, Jesus, because of the resurrection, wants to meet you right where you are today. That's worth coming to Easter for right there. And then he launches in and he starts beginning to let them know what the missing piece is before he gets into the message. And so this is what he says. After he says that, he says, um, what therefore you worship as unknown this I proclaim to you. Paul is saying, because there's so much confusion and because there's all these gods, in fact, some of them are unknown, um, I have the answer. There is a missing piece that you can put into your life that will solve the things that you need, that will solve purpose and will solve meaning and will help you to determine that this life is not all there is. Um, there is one thing, thing, and Paul's gonna talk about that thing. Guess what that thing is? Yeah, you guessed it. It's Jesus. And if you're here today and you're a follower of Jesus, and so Easter is just a top opportunity for you to celebrate because you're already a follower and you love him and, and you've seen that Easter does uh, change everything in your life. If I were to ask you to raise your hand, and I'm not asking you to, and any of our campuses are online, but if I were to ask you, has Jesus been the missing piece in your life? Would you raise your hand? I think many of you would. I know I would, because when I was 22 years of age, I recognized that sports, um, who, what was my God? Sports wasn't the thing. Uh, relationships weren't the thing. Money wasn't the thing. And I discovered in my life, by myself, as I've told you here at Fairhaven Church, sitting on the side of a hill, I encountered Jesus, and he was the missing piece. And Paul wants to make sure that he's talking to all these people that the missing piece is, in fact, Jesus. And then he launches into his message. You ready for it? Here it is. It's in Acts chapter 17. This is what he says. So he starts the message. He says this. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, that's a really important phrase there, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything. Paul is saying, look, if you think that you got to do all kinds of things because God needs you to do things in order for you to get his attention, you got that wrong. I mean, he's the God, the Lord of heaven and earth. He's the one that made all of this. So even though you make all these temples, gods are, are not limited by that. In fact, the God of the universe, the one true God, doesn't need you to do all these things. In fact, let me put it in words that I think you and I can understand. Here's what Paul is saying. You don't need to work to get God's attention. You have it. See, here at Fairhaven Church, we love to celebrate the fact that you don't have to look at a list of things and follow that list before somehow you get God's attention. You don't have to attend a service like this for three, five, six months in a row before somehow you've earned the right to get God's attention. That's not how it works. See, God sent his son to planet Earth, put skin on, was raised, died on the cross, placed in a tomb. Three days later, Easter Sunday, he is risen. He walked away from a tomb. 
And he did that because he wants to prove to us that you have his attention. Easter proves that. I've told you before, if you're a guest, you probably haven't heard, uh, that years ago, my oldest son bought a dog for his girlfriend, who then became his fiance, who then became his wife. And we thought it was pretty cute at the time when he bought the dog for her, and uh, we kind of kept it at the house uh, so that they could play with it and so forth. And then they got married. We thought, okay, awesome. They got married, and so when they got married, you know, they moved into their own place. And so I said, hey, son, you're going to take the dog, right? And he goes, no, no, we're going to leave the dog. I said, you can't, you can't leave the dog here. Come on, help me out your parents. You can't leave the dog here. This is your dog. You can't leave the dog here. The little dog's name is Boba. It's a little black dog about this big. Anybody ever have Boba tea? Can I just see your hands in all of our campuses? Yeah, you know those little black things that are in the boba tea? That's why we named her Boba, like a little, little black dog here. And so we've had this dog. They got married. They got their own dog, actually. Uh, believe it or not, two of them, to be exact. And so we have this little black dog, Boba, and we've had it now for 13-some years. She's getting old. She's got gray hair coming out of her you know, her whiskers and her eye and so forth. And she's really kind of waddling. She can't jump on the furniture anymore. She barely can get inside the house. It's absolutely amazing. The worst part, though, is in the last couple of weeks, we've noticed she's gone deaf, <laughs> completely deaf. Like used to, you know, she would bark, a certain bark, and we would know, ah, she wants to go outside. So we'd walk over and we'd open the door and she'd go outside, and then she'd be outside, and then she had another bark, which is a different sound, and we'd go, ah, she wants to come in, and we'd let her in. But now the bark has changed because she can't hear herself. So the bark has kind of gotten very weird, like, I don't know. And so, you know, and now when we go outside, you know, and, or when she goes outside and we're trying to get her back inside the house, you know, you call her name or you clap or you whistle, nothing. <laughs> I literally, we literally have to walk out and tap her on the back. <laughs> and she looks up at you and now we're doing sign language with our dog. Like, you got to come inside now, it's time to eat, um, <laughs> you know, or go to sleep. And so... This dog is completely deaf, can't hear a thing. And we have such a hard time getting this little dog's attention. Poor Boba, I don't know, she's probably at the end of her life cycle, who knows. But we love this little dog, and it's absolutely amazing. And as I'm watching this and experiencing this in our own house, I'm thinking to myself, man, am I ever glad that, you know, I don't have to scream and holler and try to find a way to tap God in the back and, hey, I'm right here. You see, Paul is being very clear to these people who are really confused about the missing link, and he says to them, you know, you don't need to work to get God's attention. You have it. You have it. That's an amazing reality in Easter, that you have God's attention today. I bet that's why Paul wrote in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, that you should be anxious for nothing. In fact, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to him. That's a God who is attentive to you and to me. And he wants to know your thoughts. He wants to know what's going on because he wants to be there for you. Paul goes on, though, and he says this. And since he, that's God himself, and since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything, Paul is saying, don't be confused, guys. Um, everything you have, you may be smart and you may have a good salary, um, but that's not because you're good. You may, have, you, know, you may have lots of things in your life, lots of toys in your life, um, and that's not because you're, you're better. Um, everything you have, little or a lot, everything you have is from God. So Paul wants to make that very clear. So he gives to all mankind life and breath and everything, and he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place. L let me try to clarify that. What Paul is saying is, God gives you everything that you have. And there's only one human race. Because he's talking to those in Athens. He's talking to those from different places of the world. And so he said, there's only one human race. Doesn't matter what your skin color is. Doesn't matter what your ethnic background is. Doesn't matter what language you speak. It doesn't matter what your upbringing looked like. I mean, for me, I was raised in Asia. My wife and I, we were raised in Southeast Asia. I mean, truth is, we're Asian. And Paul is saying, we're all one person. And God has something for all of us. All of us. 
and he wants to give it to you. In fact, this is, I think, what Paul is saying. Paul is saying, you don't need to win God's love. He gives it to you. See, the power of Easter is that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is available to you and to me today because that's how he expresses his love. He wants his power to be at work in your life so that people around you are like, man, what is that? Well, that's Jesus and the resurrection. <coughs> Kathy, my wife, and I, we were on our way to the grocery store a couple days ago. Um, it was my day off, and so uh, she said, do you want to go to the grocery store with me? The real answer is no, <laughs> uh, but the answer I gave her was, of course, sure, honey, because I love to be with her, and so I said, yeah, I'll go with you. I'll push the car, and so we're on our way, and we have this little back road that we can get to the grocery store. It's a two-lane road, and as we're on this road going to the grocery store, there was a, a car in front of us, and they were driving really, really slow, and I thought, oh, man, I think something's wrong, and so all of a sudden, the car stopped in the middle of the road. And this elderly lady got out, and I thought, oh, no, she's got car problems. And so I didn't say it, but I was about to say it to my wife, hey, why don't you go ahead and go to grocery shopping? I'll help this lady out because obviously something's going on there. She had gotten out of her car, and her hands were like this. And I kind of looked and saw her hands, and she had bread in her hands. And she walked in front of her car because there was a goose. <laughs> and my first thought was, we're trying to go to the grocery store here. She put her car in the middle of the road and got out to feed this goose, and there we are. We're trying to get around her, and so finally we looked at her, and you know all the cars were kind of backing up, and we went around her a little bit, and, and I thought to myself, this is like two or three days ago, I thought to myself, isn't that amazing? This lady stopped and took notice of this little geese, this goose. Incredible. And that's the image that I had in my mind as I was thinking about Easter, that God... His attentiveness to you is because he loves you and he'll stop because you're just that important. In fact, let me put it this way. That goose didn't deserve that at all. And isn't that the point? See, if you're here today and you're thinking, I don't think God could love me, you have no idea what happened in my life. You have no idea what I have done in my life. And I would say to you, it doesn't matter. Because if you deserved it, nobody would deserve it. Because the truth is, I don't deserve it. None of us do. And that's the point. That's the celebration of Easter. That's what Paul is trying to communicate. That God loves us so much that he gives it to us and he desires to love you. And he wants you to experience that love. Here's the, here's the interesting part. You can't feel it and understand it unless you're in a relationship with him. You may see bits and pieces. You may see this and that. But to really understand God's love... You need to be in a relationship with him because it's in that relationship that you'll experience his love in a way that you can never experience outside of it. That's why Paul was pretty clear. You don't need to win God's love. He gives it to you. And then he goes on. He's got one more thing he wants to say, and he says this. Um, so uh, you should, they should seek God. Whoever's listening to this message, Paul is talking to them. You should seek God, perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. Paul's pretty clear here that if you seek God, You'll find him. And all of us are kind of on our own kind of path. You're on your own spiritual journey. I've been on my own spiritual journey, you know, and I was 22 and so forth, making decisions. Um, and so Paul says, you got to seek and find him. Here's what Paul is saying. Paul is saying, you don't need to wonder about a relationship with God. You just have to want it. It's that simple. Because you don't deserve it, and there's nothing you can do to really earn it. And so he just wants to offer you. That's why Easter is so, so important. That's why Easter changes everything. Because we get the opportunity to celebrate that he wants to give us his attention, he loves us, and he wants to be in a relationship with us. I mean, think about that. The God of the universe, the one true God, wants to be in a relationship with you who knows you by name and knows everything that you're thinking right now. Wow. Wow. Paul ends his message, and he says this. He said, um, the times of ignorance God overlooked, but now, Paul is saying, you may have had some missing links in your life. You may not have understood, but now you do. So you can't use the excuse, I didn't know. 
So he says, the time of the victory is God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. And the word repent there is to change your mind. To go from, you know, I think I can do this on my own, or I can figure it out on my own. To change your mind. And then he goes on, he says, because he has fixed a day in which ye will judge the world in righteousness by a man, Jesus, whom he has appointed, and all of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The resurrection comes at the very end of his message. See, Paul is saying, the resurrection proves it all. Or, the resurrection changes everything. Easter changes everything. And so, the question that Paul posed to the people back then is, so what do you want to do? You can read it for yourself. It's in Acts chapter 17. When he finished his message, he said, so... What do you want to do? Some said, hey, I I need some more time to explore this. Some said, I'm in. I believe. I want to make that decision today. And some said, you know, I I believe, but I want to celebrate this, and I want to keep going, and I, I want to make sure other people hear about this. And so what I would say to you today from Paul's message is, so what do you want to do? I'm going to invite every person on all of our campuses. We've done this now for a couple of Easter's. And so to make sure that nobody is uh, singled out, uh, humor me, if you will. Would you just take out all your smartphones today, and would you just text the word Easter to 32,000? If you would do me a favor, let's all do it. Because if we all do it, there might be some people here today that want to make some really important decisions. And they may want to celebrate Easter because Easter changes everything. And so would you just do me a favor? Take out your smartphones right now, wherever you're at. Just look to the people left and right. If they're not, just elbow them. It's fine. We're in church, no problem. And all of our camps is Springboro. Would you help me just, you know, take out your cell phones. Northmont, help me out. Beaver Creek, Classics, if you wouldn't mind, just take out your smartphones and text the word Easter to 32,000. And in about a minute, you're going to get a response. And in that response, you get to determine what your response to Easter is. Like Paul, I would say to you, so what do you want to do? I mean, if Easter changes everything then there might be a response that you want. Let me give you suggestions, actually, that when you get the response after you type in the word Easter to 32,000, let me give you a couple of options. Number one, you might want to say, just type in the word celebrate when you get the response. Because this Easter, you just want to acknowledge to God, not to me, not to, you know, not to the church. We just want to start a conversation if you want one. If you don't, it's fine. But type the word celebrate because you want to acknowledge to God today I want to keep going in my faith. I want to celebrate that Easter changes everything. I want to continue in my faith journey. I just want to celebrate that this is an important moment in my life. You just type in the word celebrate, and uh, we'll get a response back to you on that one. Number two, your option is, I I want to believe. Today is your day. Today could be your day. Like Paul, you have an encounter with Jesus, and it changes everything in your life. You could just simply say, you know what, I want to believe today. Um, you've, you've heard all you need to hear. You don't need to have all the answer, answers because nobody does. But maybe today is your day, and you just want to type in believe. I want to make a decision today because Easter changes everything. I want to make a decision today to believe. Would it help you to know that we've had many services already? And there's already been many people who've said, I want to believe. Because Easter changes everything. There's a third option that you could type in if you want. You could type in the word renew, meaning you maybe have already made that decision in your life to be a follower of Jesus. You've invited him into your life, but you know what? You're not where you need to be. You're not where you should be. You're not where God wants you to be. You know it better than anybody. And there's no judgment from us. We just want to help you in that process. And so maybe today, because of what Jesus did, and because of the resurrection, and because you have his attention, he loves you, and he wants a relationship, maybe today you just say, you know, I want to renew that, and I want to pick up where I left off. I want to start again. I want to, I want to launch in. I want to let some things go. I want to start some things in my life. I don't know what that is for you. But you can type in the word renew, and that could be your decision today. Last one, you could say explore. In other words, you're just not ready. I want to explore it. I need to, I need to know more. I need to learn more. In fact, during this, you might even engage in a conversation if you want so that we could help you to continue to explore. These are the four options that you have. Text Easter to 32,000 and type any one of these words there. Can I tell you something cool? 
I talked to a guy, and he said this year, he's putting celebrate down. Because last year, he put believe. And two years ago, he put explore. So I said, in three years? He said, yeah, three years ago, I, I needed more. So he engaged and was coming and listening and studying. And then last Easter, he decided that he wanted to believe. And this Easter, he says, I just want to celebrate the fact that in three years, my life has been completely changed. Jesus was the missing piece for him. Chances are, could be for you as well. Would you bow with me real quick as we pray? Father, I just thank you, Lord, for every person here. Thank you for this incredible opportunity we have to be here to celebrate. Lord, we thank you that the tomb is empty, that when the ladies came early Sunday morning and the angel was there and the angel said, he's not here, he is risen. And so, Father, because of that, we pray that the power of Jesus would be in our lives today. Whether it's healing or direction or courage or help or whatever it might be that we need in our life, we thank you, Father, that we have your attention and that you love us. And in this relationship that we have with you, that power can be made known. I pray that to be true for all of my friends here on all of our campuses. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, amen. amen. Happy Easter, everybody. He is risen, and I'm so excited to have worshiped with you this service. If you made a decision today, I would love to know about it, have a conversation, celebrate with you, and even send you a gift. It is an amazing decision, and your life from today forward has changed, and I would love to walk with you in this time. So please email me at online at fairhaven.church or text me at 937-800-4605. I hope you guys come back next week as we start a new series and we continue to worship the same God, the same Jesus that rose from the grave today. See you guys next week.